guys, how you doing? This is Charlie from Track Beast. So I just want to go over to the next video. So this next video consists of me uh, attempting to make my 2012 Grand Sport into a supercar feeder and only invested $30,000 including the cost of the car. And I'll go over all the cost of all the hard parts. Basically it's just bolt on. How I could do this is I built about three race cars over the years. I used to race pretty consistently about 15 years ago and I built three cars, actually four cars, and I won a championship and my friend who helps me, uh, helps me with this won three championships and he runs now an American Iron in a Boss uh, 302. So between, he's built probably seven cars, I built uh, four cars, so we have a lot of experience building, racing, uh, tuning car, fine tuning cars to make them handle the way we want. That's how I'm going to build it. So about a month and a half ago, I took this to Lime Rock. Bone stock, except I put R88R tires on it because these are run flats uh, and they're really not great track tires. And these are about three, three and a half years old. So they're a little old to be going on the track because they had so many million heat cycles in them. So I put the R88Rs on. Everything else was bone stock, engine, tram, everything, everything 100% shocks springs everything in that test i i did with that car the car handled absolutely horrible it was white knuckle driving all the way through lime rock lime rock is a pretty tight track with some fast turns and some not so fast turns but it's only 1.52 miles long so it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty tight so i got to notice that this car really did not handle well. It was very, um, the ass was very wobbly and it seemed to transfer weight front to back very quickly. So it was very, very dangerous feeling. And I was basically, for me to do a 1.34 seconds a lap was basically me white knuckle driving, concentrating 1000% on my driving, applying the gas very, very gently and even then, the car actually almost went on me, as you can see in this next clip. When I got back after doing everything, I, there was a couple of issues with the cars. The handling was number one. Me flopping around in the leather seat was number two. And number three was the brakes. Uh, I put a little better than stock brakes on and they disintegrated within one 20 minute session from full brakes to nothing almost nothing one more lap and i would have been down to metal on metal so i bought a pair of hawk 70s with me and i replaced them as you can see in, in one of the videos i replaced them and i did uh about five laps and my foot went to the floor and i went off the track so I ended up boiling the fluid because it generated so much heat from the Hawk 70s. Since then, I upgraded the brake fluid to Motul 660s, and I also upgraded the brakes. When I was at the track that day, there was a guy with a C5 Z06, and I was got to talking to him, and he had one of these, so he 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 knew all about them and knew exactly what I had to do. I looked at his car and I said, what kind of brakes you running in? Do they overheat? So he goes, the, first, the stock ones overheated bad. So he put these Willwood um, big brake kit on. And it, they're called Aero 6 and they're the race version. Come with rotor hat, loading rotor, forged calipers, which are maybe one third the weight of the original calipers, and also brake pads, race brake pads. So all of that was $1,550, which I thought was a bargain. It's a really, really nice setup. It's a radial mount, um, radial mount caliper means it loads from the top, and they give you brackets to bolt to the spindle, and then the two bolts come up, and then you just bolt the caliper on. Really nice setup. Very easy, very easy to take on and off. And also came, uh, I actually bought steel braided lines for it at the same time. So maybe it's a little over $1,600 for everything. I'm going to be taking this to Lime Rock next week, and I'm going to see how it does with all the modifications. So <clears throat> that was to remedy the brakes was the Willwood upgrade. 
And to remedy the handling, there were several, several issues. First, I knew the shocks were shot because of so much weight transfer. So I ended up buying R8 Bilsteins and putting them on and drove it around. And they were, they were a little harsher than regular, uh, sh the regular shocks, but they just handled much, much better. I still didn't like the way the rear feel felt. So I ended up getting Johnny O'Connell sway bar set, front and rear. And the rears were adjustable. Shocks number one, sway bars number two. Number three, when I was back there, I noticed that the height adjustment bolts and pads were worn out and they were also at the lowest position and this car was riding very, very high in the rear. So I bought Eibach lowering bolts, which I'll show you a picture of. And I installed them in the rear. The fronts I left, I didn't have time to put them in the front. But the front's fine, and all my problems were in the rear. So they come with a hard rubber bushing at the bottom, and that could also cause the swaying uh, that I was feeling. So I, I replaced them and lowered the rear. So being jacked up in the rear, you're going to see pictures of this before and after. I'm going to show you pictures. The car was jacked up in the rear, <clears throat> which really, if the front's low and the back's up, that could have caused a lot of the wobbling because it's not the op optimum um, dynamics for the rear springs. It should be less, car should be level, so less weight transfer. So I did that, and I still wasn't 100% happy. So I ended up changing the transmission mounts to a solid transmission mount and took out the rubber ones. But why I did this is, this is a rear transmission that is bolted directly to the rear end. So it's not a transaxle, which means the transmission and axle are all one, like a Porsche or, or a rear engine car. It's actually a regular six speed manual bolted in the back, bolted directly to the rear end with a torque tube taking the power from the motor and putting it to the transmission, which gives you a, a nice a weight balance because you could probably get 50-50 weight distribution out of this car because the transmission's in the rear. If the transmission moves and the rear is bolted to the transmission, that could make the rear unstable. So I put the transmission mount and it made a huge difference. So between everything I did, I feel very comfortable that this car is going to handle much, much better because I could feel I'm not getting that sway. It just feels more planted. And I do some tests in some parking lots and whatnot and offering them some ramps and it's a big difference. Grand Sport that I purchased for $21,000 off of eBay. It was a salvage car. It was a flood salvage. So I had the car checked out and it checked out. Everything was fine. I think that actually it really wasn't a flood. I think the guy just left the tops off during a rain and um, it soaked the interior and they gave him a, they, they junked the car. So, and they gave, him, they gave him full value, and all I did is change the carpets in this, and this car is perfect. I didn't do anything mechanically to it. The interior is mint, the outside is mint, the motor runs like a charm, transmission's perfect, everything is great. So I started with $21,000 investment. Now, I also met a guy in Florida who bought a C5 Z06, another great track car, and his, I think he paid thirteen dollars or $14,000, he had the same problem, and it was a flood salvage, and he ended up making that a track car for maybe another $8,000, $10,000, and he had a great track car for $25,000. So the reason why I picked the Grand Sport as opposed to a regular car is the Grand Sport is basically the Z06 minus the 427 motor. It has everything else. It has the dry sump. It has tranny coolers, oil coolers, and the dry sump motor, which is really, really good. And this is an LS3 430 horsepower as opposed to a Z06, which comes with 505 horsepower. So this car is light enough that I'm very confident that 
with minor modifications once I'm done getting it handled. I'm probably going to put headers on and just to get it up to maybe 460, 470 horsepower. And then I think this thing will be a beast. But first I want to get the handling down. You don't jump into power unless you get the handling down. If the car was dangerous at 430 horsepower, imagine how dangerous it would be at 470 horsepower. So I want to get the handling down and then I'll work on the modifications to get some more horsepower, which would mean headers, cold air intake, and, and a tube. And then I'm going to try, like I said, I did a 103.4. I'm going to try to get this car into the one minute to one minute and one. And at that that times at Lime Rock, I think I'll pretty much be pretty, pretty much fast as most of the supercars out there. Granted, maybe, maybe not a, a G, GT3 RS Porsche. Those things are brutal, and those do sub one minutes. I don't think the Z06, uh, Z06s do below one minute, and I don't believe the ZL, ZL1s, Camaros do below, because they're very, very heavy, and it's a very, very tight track. Weight is very important to this track, so the lighter you are, and if you get the car handled, you get momentum in and out of, in and out of the turns, and that's where you get your speed, and that's how you cut down your times. So I need to take two seconds off this time by the time I'm done. And like I said, all keeping under the budget of $30,000. We're going to add that up to you right here and, and get the total where I am so far. But I'm not finished, but I'm going to take this to Lime Rock the way it is and see what times I do. And then I'll let you know uh, after that. But we're gonna, I'm going to post this video and then post a video after Lime Rock uh, with all uh, comparisons on the times I did to the times I did now. And I'll have side-by-side -side comparisons. Okay? Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Number one, the brakes were horrible. So what I did is I went out, I went out and bought a big brake kit from Willwood. And I bought the R race kit, which had the bigger pads. So it comes with uh, a rotor hat, a nice super heavy duty vented rotor, as you can see. It's a 14 inch rotor, same as the um, stock one with a little more surface area. And this is the six piston caliper that replaced the stock six piston calipers. But if you notice, look at the size of those pads. They are awesome animal pads. So those pads insulate the pistons of the brake caliper from heat because they're so big. So they keep the heat away from the caliper, which in turn stops the fluid from boiling. So what I did is I <clears throat> put in, uh, I used to run wool with 600. I ended up putting in Motul 660 plus. They say it's a better, a better all around brake fluid. Plus the higher boiling point, the better. But this is awesome. These are forged calipers. Very, very lightweight. They weigh not maybe a third of what the original cast calipers did. And they're just really well built and they're supposed to be very, very strong. Also with the kit, I had to buy the um, steel braided line that goes with this because the um, stock caliper has a banjo fitting so this is a direct line so it steals better it doesn't expand the contract and <clears throat> so that's how i fixed the brakes so i'm putting in right now i'm putting in a set of the fronts and rears philstein bilstein however you want to say it shocks r8s so these are supposed to be pretty uh pretty badass and they're, they're track and um, autocross shocks. So I'll put them in, see how the car rides, see what the difference is. They're supposed to be a little harsh in the streets, but, uh, but I'll find out. These are probably equal to the SS1 LE in track mode because when you put that in track mode, those shocks are stiff as hell. And it's really not fun to drive in the street with those. But um, it is what it is. If I need shocks, I need shocks in this. And if I need them to be stiff to go fast, it is what it is. Because I am going to make this my track car, street car, track car. So, Bill Steen shocks going in today. The first thing we're doing is putting Johnny O'Connell sway bars on. They're supposed to take that out the inherent um, understeer that's put in from General Motors from the factory. Really nice kit, and the rear the rear is adjustable. 
So if you, we're, we're going to start out in the middle, you always start in the middle so you can go either way. So you start here and if you're oversteering, you make the bar longer and you go here. And if you're uh, understeering, you make the bar tighter. So um, really cool uh, polyurethane bushings, super heavy duty uh, links. So we're going to pop this in. It's just a pretty easy swap. Um, there's a, a YouTube video on how to change it. It's actually so simple. If you could do any work, you could change these over. Hey, how you doing? Um, so I want to go over this, show you the screw, the um, height adjusting screws. So this, this is a height adjusting screw. This is from the rear and they're the same exact as the front. And you see how warped it is and it's a little out of shape. And the Passenger side rear was actually was actually uh, deformed, and it was as soon as we took it out, it came off its perch. It's just deteriorated. It's got a lot of rot in it, as you can see. So we replaced those with Ibach right height adjusters, and it's now you notice the pad is much much smaller. So these could lower the car up to two inches if you really need it. And um, it's polyurethane as opposed to hard rubber. So it, uh, it doesn't squish at all. So this is a really good fix. And I didn't notice really any, any ride, ride difference whatsoever. So this is the Eibach uh, screws. I got four of them. I put two in. The front two I left in. I just didn't have time. Because you've got to take apart, you know, uh, upper control arms, a um, bunch of things to, to take these off. It was a bit of a pain. I really didn't have time, but I think the rear was mostly my problem. The front seems fine. So, right height adjusters. So these are the solid transmission mounts on the left. On the right is the stock rubber ones. They're very, very heavy, and they're um, they do have a lot of movement in them. So install the ones on the left. Um, I really didn't even notice a difference in ride quality. So it's just a win-win situation by putting them in and you get no flex in the transmission from the torque of the engine. So far now I spent $25,225. And I'm about, I have another 5,000 to go. So I'm gonna test out the car the way it is with all of these improvements and then figure out what I'm gonna spend the rest of the money on. I think I'm going to go with Corbu seats, uh, which are racing seats which will hold me in because um, the seats are really, really not supportive for uh, hard, uh, hard turns. And this car is capable of hard turns. Plus I'll probably save like 80 to 100 pounds. I think you're gonna be very, very surprised how just this, couple thousand dollars in improvements made this car so much faster than it was. Because I have a feeling by me testing it out, this thing's gonna be a beast. So stand by, next week we're gonna have the video out and um, you'll see what, what this did at the track. I'll talk to you soon.